Hi, everybody. I'm Scott Pierce. Welcome to Georgia Southern Football 94 here along with Coach of the Eagles, Tim Stowers. And I guess, Coach, you look at this game, you're back down in Miami, you're starting the season, should be a great season. And you look at the teams, you look at four national champions, you look uh, at more wins than any other team in their division, and that's Georgia Southern. Now you get to play Miami, who has a very similar record on a different level. What are your feelings well, going into the really game? we really met our match, but we met our match on a different level. You know, Miami's got a super football team, and we got the slot beat out of us, and there's no excuse for that, and that starts with me. I knew coming into the football game that we could not give them a lot of opportunities. We gave them an opportunity when we come with the kickoff. They got points out of that, and then also we had an opportunity to get points when we snapped the ball with the holder's head. Uh, it's a poor job of coaching on my part. Then the Avalanche started with a football team with that kind of ability and that kind of speed and, and that kind of fire, available fireworks. You can't give them that many opportunities to do. Uh, they'll beat the slop out of you, and that's exactly what they did. It seemed like sort of a snowball effect, that it just started from the from the get-go, and from there it was just hard to recover. Well, we also had entirely too many penalties. Even early in the football game when we would have some success moving the football, I think we got a first down, then we ended up having to hold it so uh, or an illegal snap, they call it one time. And we had entirely too many penalties. I think we had uh, eight penalties for 60 yards in the football game. If you have one penalty, that's too many. Okay, all right. Well, we'll be back right after this, and we'll look at some of the first half highlights. Welcome back to Georgia Southern Football 94. I'm Scott Pierce, along with Coach Tim Stowers. And, Coach, in the Orange Bowl, the, one of the greatest arenas in football history, whether it's college or pro, and mm -hmm. you come down here, you play the University of Miami, and you've got about 65,000 rabid fans. What does that do to your football team? Well, it's a little different atmosphere than what we're used to uh, playing at home. We're playing in one double A. I'll be glad when we get back in our league next week against uh, West Georgia at home, first night game of the season. When you play a team like Miami, they just have great speed. They have great condition. You know, 57 football teams before us had come down here, and we were one of them, and come down here and gotten beaten. Three of those were Notre Dame, and two of them were Florida State. And uh, I would like to have had a better showing uh, how, we, once again, we can't let a good football team beat us twice. And the Eagles didn't want that to happen. They came out of the locker room fired up. It was a hot, sunny day in Miami. The Orange Bowl official starting temperature was 87 degrees. But, folks, let me tell you, it was more like 110 on the field. And the fact that the Eagles lost the coin toss was just a sign of what was in store for them the rest of the day. The Hurricanes elect to receive the opening kickoff. And Eric Smith puts the ball into play, and it was evident. Once Jamie German took the ball into the one and took it up the right side of the field, cutting back toward the middle, he was off to the races that the Eagles would be in for a long day. Finally, German stopped at the 35-yard line by Brancis Williams. And just the second play from scrimmage, big number 28, James Stewart for Miami carries Eagle defenders finally breaking loose and scoring and quickly the Hurricanes up seven to nothing and it was obvious that Miami wanted to break the record of 57 consecutive home wins and they were off to a good start. Georgia Southern had their opportunity on offense to start from the sixth. First play Joe Dupree almost gets his head taken off. The Miami defense is fired up. Joe has to look for his helmet. Second play Fullback Tyrone Stevens stopped after only a one-yard gain. Now the Eagles on third down try to run the option. Slot back, 32, Marlow Warthen gets run out of bounds, and the Eagles already forced a punt. Eric Smith, if there was one bright spot to the day, Eric Smith had a great day punting. He punted 11 times for an average of 45 yards, and that's not bad. But most football fans know that if your punting is a highlight, then the rest of the day must have been pretty tough. Georgia Southern does manage to hold Miami on their next possession. And it looked like the Eagles would get a break as the snap goes over the Miami punter's head. But hey, he does a good job, still manages to get the punt off. But the Eagles have good field position as the ball's down at Miami's 46-yard line. Joe pitches to Chris Wright on the option, who turns the corner for seven yards. But the offense stalled thanks to a personal foul penalty. Eagle center Franklin Stevens says the offense has to take some of the blame. Well, on offense, I mean, the defense, they can take the blame for giving up 56 points. But, I mean, it's just as much as the offense fault as it is the defense. I mean, we didn't even get a first down, I mean. 
until I think late in the game or something like that. Every time we would get a game, I mean a first down, we'd get a penalty or something and nullify it. So I, I just think the offense just has to really take a lot of blame for it. Regardless of who's to blame, it's obvious that Miami had something to prove. In the second quarter, Georgia Southern starts a drive at their own 25-yard line. First event, a penalty. Then Chris Wright takes it inside. No gain there. Then he tries the outside. Turns the corner, picks up about two yards. Then the best pass play of the game for the Eagles. A 23-yard gain complete from Joe Dupree to Alfonso Harris to the 45-yard line. But Georgia Southern is called for an illegal receiver downfield. And after an incomplete pass and another penalty, the Eagles are forced to punt. Miami scores two more times, and we go to the half with the Hurricanes leading the Eagles 28 to nothing. Okay, well, we'll be back with a look at the second half highlights right after this break and a look at a feature story about the college. Thanks for coming back to Georgia Southern Football 94 and coach a tough loss here at the Orange Bowl. But I, I guess there you have to go on from here. You can't let something like this uh, ruin your whole season. Well, there's no doubt about it. At halftime, we were down 28 to nothing and we challenged our players to come back out and play hard in the second half. Maybe get back in the football game and maybe have a chance to win at the end. We kind of started the avalanche with the. Uh, I think that was the opportunity we had with the field goal. Ball snapped over his head, snapped over the holder's head, and we throwing the ball deeper on territory on a kickoff return. We wanted to come back out and correct our mistakes. One thing that really hurt us was we had at halftime, we had six penalties from 45 yards, which is entirely too many penalties. And it seemed like those penalties, and especially in the second half, came at critical times. Well, they really did. They were on the offensive side of the ball. We got a holding penalty here. We had a got called for eagle illegal snap one time. One time the offensive line was in the lined up in the backfield and uh, had another holding call. And also had one on a long pass. It was a uh, illegal man downfield on a, on a good on pass. Illegal, illegal receiver downfield. Uh, on, I think it was a pass we threw to Afonso Harris. Right. And Joe made a good decision to throw the football and found him made a really fine catch on the, on the play. And one of the most costly penalties was on this beautiful reverse by Dexter Dawson taking the pitch from New Georgia Southern quarterback Kenny Robinson, who came in the game in the second half, went all the way from the GSU 28 down to Miami's three-yard line. And it all came back thanks to a holding penalty. They had some very large players on the line of scrimmage today. <laughs> they really did. They had some outstanding players. Uh, they had one. One player was uh, 6'8", 338, and he was all of it. That's incredible. And those incredibly big offensive linemen gave the Miami quarterbacks all the time they needed. Here, Collins has all day to find CeCe Jones for a 23-yard gain to near midfield. That's an example of what the Eagle defense had to contend with. But GSU middle linebacker Paul Carroll didn't want to hear any excuses about their size. Really, we just didn't execute. Uh, uh, we had a real uh, good game plan going into the game. Uh, the coaches got us ready, but uh, we just didn't execute and really didn't play hard. Uh, we didn't play like Georgia Southern football. And uh, like, I, like I said, we're going to go back uh, next week and just work harder and harder and harder and see what we can do. The Eagles starting quarterback, senior Joe Dupree, played as well as could be expected under the conditions. But we also had the opportunity to see a glimpse of the future when redshirt freshman quarterback Kenny Robinson came into the game. Robinson completed two of three passes and got some valuable playing experience. Well, I thought he did it. I thought he did a good job. He probably made some mistakes, just as everybody has. He had the first game jitters, but we felt like we needed to get everybody in the football game. The football game was nearly out of reach at that point in time, and we wanted everybody to play. I think we played uh, actually about six or seven true freshmen in mm -hmm. the football game, and they got some good, valuable playing experience. And you know, it was good for the football team to be able to come down here and get this type of experience, this type of atmosphere. You know, you can always find something really, really bad. Mm -hmm. Like this is something that's really, really terrible having this football team. You can always find something good out of something that happened really, really bad. What can you take away good from this game? 
Well, everybody's got to search their soul, and everybody's got to search their heart. They got to search their desires, and they've got to decide how far they want to go. And a matter of how far they will go will matter just how they bounce back while the Eagles struggled against Miami. Don't forget, the Hurricanes are the elite of college football in Division 1A. The Eagles are the elite in 1AA, and junior safety Rob Stockton knows that they'll regroup. When you feel like we just fell in that locker room, um, since I've been here, this is my fourth year, and we've never gave up 56 points. We've never, we've never been out of a ball game, really, to speak of, and, uh, and it's, it's, it's easy to regroup. We, um, we know what we got to do. We're made of a lot of character, and we're going to do it. We're going to come together, and we're going to play hard next week. We go back and get the blue collar mentality. You just, just got to go out and work hard. Uh, someone has to pay for what happened today. I mean, since it's West Georgia, I mean, it might as well be there. With quarterbacks from the past like Jim Kelly, Bernie Kosar, and Vinny Testaverde, you would expect Miami to be all air. But actually, their first drive of the third quarter was pretty methodical. There, Stewart ran for four. Here, Costa makes a pass to Jamie German for eight yards out in the left flats. Then Stewart up the middle for a nice gain, dragging the Georgia Southern defenseman 22 yards on that run. Then Miami quarterback Frank Costa is going to get into the act. A nice pass for 22 yards up to Tucker. And then Stewart off left tackle for four yards, breaking it out wide before being brought down by a host of Eagles. Costa then with an inside pass to a streaking Jamie German, who makes it all the way down to the Eagle four-yard line. And two plays later, big James Stewart up the middle two yards for a touchdown. And it was different to see Miami with a balanced attack, rushing and passing leading 35 to nothing with eight to go in the third quarter. On the kickoff, Dexter Dawson takes the kick at the six yard line. A nice return of 14 yards up to the 20 yard line before being mauled by a host of hurricanes. On first down, Joe Dupree hands off to Roderick Russell who gets three yards up the middle. Then Dupree on a keeper off the left side. Goes for five yards. And on third down, the Eagles are stuffed at the line. And are once again forced to punt. The Hurricanes went on to score again in the third quarter and started off the fourth the same way as Miami's second string tailback Shipman breaks outside, turns on the burners, and is gone 82 yards for the score. The Hurricanes went on to win 56 to nothing. They established what they wanted to. They are one of the best teams on the planet. They also set a new record for home wins at 58. They edged out Alabama. They set the record under Bear Bryant from 1962 to 1982 at 57. But the Eagles are pretty impressive at home as well. We'll be back after this break and take a look at our next opponent. That's West Georgia. Stay tuned. Southern Football 94. Coach, we're, we leave Miami and we go back home to the friendly confines of our John, stadium. I'll be really, I'll, we'll be ready, and I know our players will be ready to get back in the friendly confines of <laughs> Zimbabwe Field, Paulson Stadium. Under the lights next week, it's going to be an exciting time. We've got a brand new school board. I understand there's going to be some fireworks uh, next Saturday night against West Georgia, and I think we've got a great opportunity to start a really new type of atmosphere a uh, electrifying type atmosphere at night 
uh, at home in Statesboro. It should be a great game, Coach. They're going to have a special commemorative ticket for this game, the first game with our own lights at Paulson Stadium in Statesboro, 7 o'clock. We'll see you there with Georgia Southern Football 94.